Hi, welcome to the Schenectady Today Show. I'm your host for this edition, John Cantio. Thanks so much for joining us today. It is cold outside. Someone like me who has low tolerance for the cold still made it here to do a show for you. So <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. A couple things to go over. You can check me out on YouTube, youtube.com slash SpanishJC. And I've got an event coming up on Tuesday here at Channel 16. That's January 20th. Arrival Town, 5.45 p.m. Psychic Ann Fisher will be here giving free on-air psychic readings. So if you can make it to that, that would be great. So we're going to play a clip later on in the show as well. Our first guest, we'll go right into it on this cold day. We've got Rebecca Varno. Thank nice you very much you. for being here. Thank you. Thank nice you for having you me. as well. And you are from the Captain Youth Program. Yes, it's Captain Youth and Family Services okay. in Clifton Park. We're okay. located in the municipal building with the sheriff and the town court. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that does take, that's in Saratoga. It's in Saratoga County, okay. and we primarily serve um, youth and families in Saratoga County. Okay, and I've <laughs> read a lot about this program. I was looking through the brochure, and there's... A lot, a lot to go over. Yeah. So uh, tell us in general what the youth program is. Okay, well actually Captain um, Youth and Family Services is a social service and family service organization. Okay. Um, we are a nonprofit. We service families, youth, and individuals um, through a variety of programs, as you know. There's a lot of different programs that we have. Yes. And we, you know, it's a small staff. Mm -hmm small budget but we do a lot with um, what we have and um, to to help our community now do you do that with uh, funds that the community gives you mm -hmm. is this all by donation it's not all by donation but uh -huh. we do actually um, survive by the support of our community so okay. um, that makes um, all of our work possible the donations we get from individuals and businesses um, and corporations faith-based community um, groups uh, also donate to us and help us through not only monetary but um, goods and services volunteer they volunteer for us mm -hmm. but then a large um, portion of our budget also comes from local state and federal grant monies so oh, we're okay. we're supported by the town of Clifton Park town of Half Moon Malta and then New York State and uh, the U.S. government. So it all helps getting up. It all helps. It's like all little tiny pieces that make up <laughs> the, the, the budget puzzle. <laughs> and your title is you are the uh, coordinator of the marketing PR. Did I get right. that right? Yeah, okay. the coordinator of marketing and PR. Oh, okay. And um, so basically my, my role at Captain is to, one, um, produce all the print and written materials that go out from our organization, like posters for our projects, our programs, brochures, um, press releases, media okay. communications, things like that. And then I also um, support the program. Um, I'm not um, directly involved with the programs per uh -huh. se. I'm not in charge of one of them, but I help all of the program managers with the pieces of um, you know, PR and marketing that they might need for their individual assignments. You help uh, assignments. promote the program Absolutely. as well, like being here today. Right. That's, that's helping, right? That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and there are a lot of things involved in this program. I there mean, there's a, there's a lot to go over. Uh, there are shelters for 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 teens now. Right. Who's eligible for this? Well, we have a um, a runaway home and homeless youth shelter in uh, Malta, okay. and this is for 13 to 17 year olds who are either runaway, homeless, or in danger of becoming homeless. So okay. there's some sort of conflict at home, or um, there's some sort of safety issue where they feel that they can't go home. Mm -hmm. uh, and typically, the shelter will. Um, house a youth for 30 days and they receive services while they're with us from okay. appropriate services for whatever their need is so social work or um, uh, tutoring they all receive they all attend school and things like and that. And this is temporary this is it is temporary. It is how long can they stay in this home? The uh, typically it's um, and we call it a home because that's more comfortable and okay. that's a little bit friendlier language but it is a shelter. Um, they stay for 30 days now, 30 days could be in combination of, you know, two 15-day stays, or if there's, a, we're never going to send someone back to an unsafe environment. So if that means an extra five days, or, so you know. So there's exceptions to that. There are exceptions to every rule, so rule but typically rule. 30 days is the max. Okay. Now, yeah. typically, you, who, who, what kind of teens do you get in there? Now, I hear there's runaways. Mm -hmm. And you try to get them back with their families. That's sort of the goal, isn't it? Yeah. As long as it's safe and um we can provide services, maybe some um, counseling or some mediation to dissolve or um, help out a, a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. The goal is obviously to reunite 
under 18 year olds with their families or right. some safe member of their family to live with. If that's not possible, then we will look at alternative living arrangements. But um, typically, uh, through through the services that we do offer at the shelter, um, families are reunited. Okay, and let's talk about those services. What does the shelter provide? Well, besides a comfortable home and you which know, is food, a lot, especially no, it when it's lot. this cold, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's very warm up there. Yeah. Um, it, a comfortable home. We provide. Um, services such as if they need emergency like clothing if a youth okay. comes in without say a winter coat or something like that we would provide that uh, you know food meals um, okay. and they all receive tutoring uh, mm -hmm. for their schoolwork and um, while they're at our shelter and then in turn we also have an, a sort of a structured environment where they're asked to participate in the home mm -hmm. the way youth everywhere participate in homes that they live in so they have chores that they do oh, okay. they are responsible for doing their homework oh, okay. you know keeping the place clean and uh, respecting their environment so it's, so it's, it's not a give exactly and take. a runaway place they can just go to oh, ch no. chill and have fun this absolutely is not <laughs> that's so. not it's not uh, a place to escape to necessarily unless mm. you're you know if you're in danger i guess you could call it escape mm. an escape place but it's really about teaching skills about life skills about respecting an environment about um learning how to deal with problems and socializing with other people in a, in a comfortable and um, accepted way. Mm -hmm. Does Captain Youth, uh, you know, go to them afterwards and find out their life's, lives are going well? Of course, we have um, an aftercare them? manager, yes, okay. and that person follows up with uh, both the families and the youth um, after they leave. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. And I see here the street outreach. Tell us a little bit about that. What is that? Um, we have a grant that um, funded a street outreach program at Captain. We had okay. one years ago that the funding fell through for, and now we've received funding again. So what this is is um, we have street outreach counselors who go to certain areas of the community where youth congregate at yeah. nights, on weekends, and they're reaching out to them to provide services that may be needed for people who are in crisis or could become um, in danger of becoming in crisis in their lives. So okay. we could provide things like um, temporary shelter at our okay. house or food, clothing, um, also referrals to things like um, safe sex education, pregnancy testing if that was needed, pregnancy counseling. Um, all the, it runs the gamut of social services, really, that you would think of um, someone on the street or a mm -hmm. youth that is sort of that limbo youth who might have somewhere to crash, mm -hmm. but doesn't really have the means to get good services or good healthy food or clothing. That's that's what we're providing to those people. Okay, so street outreach, does that mean you actually go out on the street we and do. find them? We do. We have a van. Literally. Literally. Wow. <laughs> we have a van that uh -huh. we take out into the community to certain areas where we know people congregate, youth congregate, okay. and we um, have young people who we would assume that um, these kids would feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Just go out and kind of start out by I don't want to say making friends because that sounds more casual, but just engaging the youth and um, sort of telling them what they have to offer. And some of that is just maybe food in the van at that minute, okay. you know, give out granola bars. And then they sort of build a relationship and hopefully over time they would um, be there. In them and stuff. Yeah, and be there to provide maybe more um, services that at that first meeting they wouldn't know they would need. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. And I also see, I'm going to read this, this okay. is Bike Works. Bike Works is a program that provides bicycles to youth from low-income families so that they can access so that they can access jobs and rec recreational, civic, and social opportunities. Mm -hmm. The program is intended to help youth acquire new or refurbished bicycles at no cost, mm -hmm. instruct youth on how to properly maintain and care for their bicycles, provide youth with properly fitted helmets, and promote community awareness of the benefits of biking over the use of motor vehicles, mm -hmm. and partner with other community agencies to author, offer ongoing youth bicycle safety education programs. So let's talk about that, the bike. Right, it's called Captain Bike Works, oh, okay. and we received funding to offer um, bicycles that would be um, donated from the community, very good used bikes um, in excellent working condition or new bikes okay and so what we're trying to do, what we have done and what we will continue to do is offer these bikes to youth that might not for whatever circumstance in their family have um, a bike for themselves okay to use and they're um, given it for free mm -hmm. and it you know we fit it so that it's the correct size for their frame and everything like that and we, we get them a helmet 
and a lock. And what we're trying to do at Captain is not only offer bicycles, which is a form of recreation and exercise to kids who might not otherwise have that, mm -hmm. but also <clears throat> to um, show the community that riding bikes in a in a, a, a community in southern Saratoga like Clifton Park, where there are tra trails and mm -hmm. sidewalks, you don't have to drive everywhere. You don't have to drive right. half a mile <laughs> to right. get, you know what I mean, to go pick up, you know, some gum or something. You could ride a bike for to save um, on emissions mm -hmm. from cars or and just to get some exercise. Which is good. Which is good. Yeah. And um, also we hope that some of the youth will be able to maybe bring some funds in to their family or to themselves through getting maybe a, a job that is just a little too far to walk and maybe they don't have a car. Maybe so you then you bike. get a bike yeah. and you can maybe get a part-time job just a day or an evening after school or, or a Saturday and bring some funds in um, to use. And plus it's, in a, it's an activity that they can do, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I find that, you know, when people have things to do, positive things to do it keeps them out of trouble so True. i think True. you know giving them a bike you know may give them you know a hobby or something you a know, hobby you can, you can work on your bike you right. can you know so. we, we we're gonna um have educational programs about bike safety and mm -hmm. um you know maybe even in the future have like a, a bike a thon where people could the community could come together and you know ride a trail and then have like a barbecue or something so it's 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 more you know that they're a bike enthusiast that that's mm -hmm. like their life yeah you know what i mean that they that's all they do and right. we're Maybe we'll create one or two of those, but it's also just, um, it's also like a piece of property for these people mm -hmm. as something to respect and to have of their own. Right. So it, it creates responsibility and just pride. Yeah. And does Captain Youth do anything for holidays? We do. do. They, okay. <laughs> what do you do for holidays? Well, we just got through the holidays, so that's why I'm laughing because yeah. it's a very busy time for Captain. We, okay. Um, we have um, the holiday giving programs at Captain, uh -huh. which um, thanks to generous donations from members of our community, we have a Thanksgiving basket program, which um, offers, and I say basket in a loose form because it's not a wicker basket, but a, a, a box of food for um, Thanksgiving dinner. It's all the trimmings, including oh. a gift card for turkey. Uh -huh. So you get a turkey, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, a pot, you know, everything that you would need to have a really hearty dinner with your family. Wow. Which is nice. So that, we, that is very nice. We gave away um, over 100 of these baskets to families in the Clifton Park, Half Moon, Malta area. And this were you year. involved in that personally? Well, I did all the PR for it. Okay. <laughs> and I helped pack some of the baskets. Uh -huh. And then we also have um, a holiday, uh, so holiday, Christmas, Hanukkah time um, giving programs, Adopt a Family, and a Toy Shop. Mm -hmm. So these two programs are great because um, the Adopt a Family program, Adopt a Child program, rather, we get a donor, which is either an individual or a group or a business who wants to adopt a specific number of children. Okay. And the children's parents come in with a wish list. You know, my child is 10 and they need a jacket and they also like Legos and, you know, they fill out a little wish list. And then the group calls us and says, we really want to adopt a child or a couple kids. Wow. And we match those people up. And then the group brings back all those gifts wrapped up all nice. And the parent gets to come in and pick up the gifts and then have something really nice for their kids under the tree. That is nice. It's really special and because... And how do, how do the uh, youth react when, when they get these gifts? Well, we don't actually see them because we're out there on Christmas morning, but, uh -huh. <laughs> but we do hear from the parents that uh -huh. not only are the kids very excited to get some things that not only they want but that they need, mm -hmm. but the parents, it, it's truly like um, a humbling experience for a lot of parents that there are people in our community that are willing to fulfill a wish list of their child that they they are just for whatever reason aren't in the position to do that themselves right now. Mm -hmm. It's really a great program. And how does that make you feel to know that you're helping people? Well, honestly, working for a nonprofit, that's one of the benefits is that we know our daily work, while mm -hmm. it's not easy and, you know, everyone is a little overworked sometimes, mm -hmm. we're helping the community and you, you can really, it's like tangible. You can see on right. parents' faces and kids' faces. Right. And so then the last program for holidays is the toy shop. Santa's Toy Shop, toy we call shop. it. Okay, and that's, that, that's a famous is, one, Yeah, right? exactly. Everybody knows that. It's this huge, we have a huge conference room, and people in the community, again, donate new toys or trinkets or, you know, stocking stuffers, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And we set up our conference room like a toy shop, like floor to ceiling, hundreds of toys. Wow. And families that didn't sign up for adopt a um, child program get to come in and pick out a, uh, a few free toys for their kids. Wow. So how did you get involved in this? Um, how did I get involved in Captain? Yes. Um, <laughs> have you always been involved with nonprofit organizations? I have been um, in different ways. Uh, I worked for Capital EAP okay. years ago here in Albany, and then I moved to the Bar Association downtown Albany, and I worked um, with the mock trial program for high school students. Okay. My background is in European history. 
oh, okay. So, so <laughs> how but, apropos. Right, I, I guess there's not a direct correlation in some people's minds, but what history programs do is teach you how to research and write and articulate. So okay. that's a, applicable to anything, really. Right, if that's true. <laughs> right, go, all can go hand in exactly. hand. Why not? Right, exactly. <laughs> so and and now I'm here. Um, it's a great it's a great program, and it's something that makes you feel good. So doing good work with the skills you have is, is always nice. Now, do you want to encourage the community to volunteer and get involved in this? Where can they find out more information about they this program? They can find out information by either calling me at 371-1185, okay. extension 304, mm -hmm. or you can um, go to www.captainyfs.org. Okay, run that by us again. So it's www.captainy, <laughs> as in youth, f as in frank, okay. s as in sam, okay. dot org. Okay, that sounded good. I like that. <laughs> and we've got a few more things we could go over quickly here. Um, the Teen Talk and Phone Friend. What's that about? Well, Tell us about Well, Teen Talk that. and Phone Friend is one of, uh, we have sort of a group of um, teen or youth programs. Um, they're, made, they're created for to develop leadership skills in youth in the Shenandoah um, and Boston Spa area. Uh -huh. And they're also um, to help some youth get jobs. Mm -hmm. So first is Teen Talk and Phone Friend, and this is um, staffed, it's a hotline that runs after school each day, um, and teens, sophomores, juniors, and seniors are trained, pretty intensely trained on the type of issues that might come up on a hotline. So they're trained to answer questions, uh, anonymous questions, confidential questions that come in on pregnancy and gambling and um, family issues, stress, dating, you know, mm -hmm. anything that a normal teen would call and just want some confidential advice, some referral information mm -hmm. about. And then the hotline, the, the phone friend part of that is younger kids can call this line and get a little homework help too. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a line where they're going to call somebody and uh, give out your personal oh, information. No. It's, no. it's truly to help. The, it's truly the, to help. It's confidential. Nobody knows who's who. Um, okay. And it's really a referral line if there's a, a true crisis they can okay. handle that they're trained to handle it and then there's also like I said the homework help which is um, you know math and science is everyone from, encouraged to use this line all youth yeah I mean we have it's, it's primarily um, advertised in Saratoga County okay. um, but again it's confidential and if someone called if someone happened to get the number and had a crisis mm -hmm. we would certainly refer them okay yeah also you help uh, you help youth uh, get jobs. Yes, we have a job great. assist program, and that basically takes um, local employers who might have a, an opening that would be appropriate for a, a young person, and it matches that with the young person who calls our office and says, you know, here are the skills I have. I, um, I know how to use a cash register, let's say, and I'm available a couple nights a week, so is there any, you know what I mean? So we match them up. You and a few hours of work. A few hours of work, and week. also help the local community fill some spots, in, you know, some employers have um, jobs that are appropriate for young people. Okay. Now, if someone doesn't have money and they want to get involved in this, they have mm -hmm. no cash, mm -hmm. is there a way for them to volunteer? Sure. We have, lo we have actually a very strong core of volunteers at Captain that we rely on. Okay. Um, we have hundreds of people who volunteer in um, a wide range of fields for us mm -hmm. every year. So um, if somebody wanted to volunteer and use skills at the outreach center or um, supervise the Teen Talk hotline that we were just talking about. There's okay. there's a, a number of things that we could use a volunteer for. So they would go to the same website or call me again at 371-1185. So you don't always have to have money. You can always you help don't. other in you, other ways. You don't. So. Uh, donations are always, you know. Always great. It, always great. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's how we also rely on that. But yeah. the people and power is also very important. we do want to stress that important. this is non-profit right it here. Is. This is it, non-profit. Yep. This is truly to help the youth. Absolutely. Our, so. our programs are all non-profit. And um, so people power is really important too obviously it's all about the people <laughs> <laughs> now uh, we got a couple more things to talk about before we let you go outreach mm -hmm. in the park tell right. us about that this is called uh, outreach in the park is also known in the community as Cheryl's Lodge mm -hmm. it's um, located in the turf community in um, Clifton Park and it offers services to families and children living in the turf community we have you know things like a bread giveaway um, every uh, week families can come in and get free bread we have after school homework help there's outings for teenagers in the in the turf community to go like mountain climbing things like that um, there's a GED program for parents mm -hmm. to get a degree um, and so there's a wide variety of things that in, uh, are housed in Cheryl's Lodge uh -huh. 
And then the Peace Camp Peace is camp the is other the thing one. that actually comes out of Cheryl's Lodge. That happens every summer. And that's a and three week summer yeah. camp located at Cheryl's Lodge for elementary school children who mm -hmm. are experiencing behavior problems at home and at school. Yeah, and so they're taught so. like kind of conflict, ways to deal with conflict in, in um, acceptable ways. Uh -huh. And it, it's also like just a really nice camp experience for these kids who might not be able to go to, you know, YMCA camp or something. So this is so. three weeks in the summer. How, mm -hmm. many, how many kids usually? I think there's around 40. 40 kids. Yeah. And these, these are younger kids. These are elementary yes. school students. Yep. And they're from um, the turf community in Clifton Park. Okay. Yeah. And through the use of drama, arts, and music, the youth are taught peacemaking skills and mm -hmm. how to deal appropriately with conflict when faced with difficult situations. Yeah. All so good there's, skills. All good skills. <laughs> so what do they do? They have a drama as, do they have uh, plays or something? Yeah, just like, you know, if you ever went to camp like I did, it's, it's the same, we try and set it up in the same fun way. You uh -huh. know, it's like learning through education. Mm -hmm. um, so they have, you know, plays and they have field trips and they get, you know, like t-shirts. It's, it's very much like camp, um, just housed at Cheryl's Lodge. Mm -hmm. And we hope that the outcome, and we've seen the outcome, is that these kids um, sort of deal with a conflict in a healthier way and they okay. learn some skills. Well, generally, uh, we're, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, what would you want to tell the audience? Uh, why should they get involved with Captain Youth? Well, I mean, getting involved with any nonprofit is important. Um, Right now, we all are experiencing uh, experiencing a difficult economy, and the people that we serve are certainly um, hit hard by that. So we've seen a, a greater need, and so if anyone has time to donate um, to participate in one of our programs, that would be great. Um, organizations and businesses might have goods to donate, food and things like that. So anything that people could do to help support um, the local community right now is very important, and we know it's hard for everyone. So people have to decide if you know time sometimes it's something right. you can give um, and that's always needed as well so it's great and this is the future because the mm -hmm. children are our future mm -hmm. so it's important to get involved well that's I thank right. you very much you. that's Re Rebecca Varno we want to give the, the email address one more time your phone number to yes. get more information the phone number is 371-1185 and the website is www.captainyfs.org Good job. Thank you. Did a great job. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks for, for having me. And we'll have you on again hopefully someday. Great. Thank you very much. You're Thanks. a great guest. Thank you. We're going to go to a clip of my television show, True Talk, with the audience. If you want to come join that audience, it's January 20th, Tuesday, uh, 5.45 p.m. I'm forgetting here. Uh, arrival times 5.45 p.m. here at the studio, 115th North Broadway. Get your chance to meet psychic Ann Fisher who's been on Court TV psychic detective so I hope to see you here here's a clip from the show and we'll be back with a psychic chick Owens so don't go anywhere we'll be right back back that way leave him alone leave him alone <laughs> <laughs> the, the new one will be better and it's ahead a little bit but it's there's a new one coming in thank you very so much so you you'll do successful I appreciate it thank you and you will be happy going that way thank you okay great